Hey guys, it's Chase here again, uh, host of ANCAP Radio, and I just want to do a quick video on LGBT rights and what it means, some common fallacies and misconceptions throughout the gay community. Now, I myself am a bisexual, so I've been asked lots of times what I think on these issues and the subjects. And uh, oftentimes I'll hear things to the effect of, well, we need to have equal marriage rights and we need to, you know, prevent hate crime and, you know, we need to prevent employers from firing us because we're gay or transgendered or whatever, right? So I'm here to kind of just clarify what it is that people as individuals are entitled to, which also encompasses the gay community and what gays and transgender people and whatever straight people even aren't entitled to okay so basically we're all entitled to not be aggressed against right and to have our physical property and our bodies not to be aggressed against either okay so theft any initiation of force against us is wrong you know whatever but when it gets into the realm of marriage, well, first of all, the state shouldn't have anything to do with marriage. And what this means is basically no one should be either compelled or prohibited to marry any two people for whatever reason. So, for instance, if you have a priest or something who doesn't want to marry you because you're gay and he has a moral issue with that, fine, he shouldn't be compelled to by the state. But in the same token, if he does wish to marry you, he shouldn't be prohibited from marrying you by the state either. The marriage should have nothing to do with getting a license from the state in the first place. That's just ridiculous. Now, um, going into the whole, uh, the the whole like employers shouldn't be firing you and and, and hate crimes and whatever. It, this is ridiculous. Like for instance, if uh, if an employer can't fire you for being transgender or gay, you know, is that is that like aesthetically abhorrent? Absolutely. I mean, that's disgusting. They're bigoted, they're prejudiced, whatever. However, it's their business. They own the business or they're the boss or whatever. If it's their money, they choose who to employ, who not to employ. Uh, that's, that's their prerogative. You know, it's their property. They get to dispense of their property and their money and employ whoever they want to and fire whoever they want to for whatever reason. Uh, and the free market has a way of dealing with these things. If, uh, a certain company gets a reputation for being bigoted and just firing people capriciously on the sole basis that they're gay or transgender or lesbian or whatever, then they're probably going to lose business. But that's beside the point. The point is that it's their property they get to dispose of as they wish, so long as they don't infringe upon the rights of others, which is not to be aggressed against and not to be stolen from, and also uh, to uphold contracts and things of that nature. So if it's actually in their employment contract, that they can't be fired for that reason. That's a different story. But it's not because they're entitled not to be fired because they're gay. That's because they're upholding a contract. That's a really uh, significant distinction here. Now, the other thing is, well, insurance companies should should uh, cover things like hormone therapy and, and whatever. Okay, well, fine. Maybe they should, maybe they shouldn't. But that's not a place for the state to come in and mandate they cover these things. You know, it's because of state mandates and subsidies and whatever that insurance is as expensive as it is today. So we don't need to be telling companies and insurance companies they have to cover this or they can't cover that. We should be just allowing the market to take care of itself. There will be a niche for gay and transgenders. Maybe there will be certain insurance catered to those people. And some people might not do it because they think it's too expensive or whatever. But the point is, you let the free market and voluntarism abound. You let people interact with each other freely and voluntarily. And you're going to see people having more rights respected than you ever did under any sort of state mandates. Because, you know, the other impression is that the state really needs to start mandating that we, we follow social mores and whatever. Then that kind of takes away people's organic ability to follow them themselves. They feel like, well, if it was something that was uh, uh, good to do or moral, then, you know, the state would tell me I have to do or not or I can't do it. So now I'm just going to base my whole moral compass on the, what the state thinks. And that's, of course, a... Uh, a completely wrong thing to do. Not to mention that the state has many contradictory laws in itself, so it's impossible. So anyways, I just want to give my quick little spiel on that. I hope it wasn't too long, too boring. I hope you guys really understand the difference between actual real rights as an individual and what gays and straights and anyone else should be expecting as an individual and what uh, are not rights and what are actually considered entitlements, which really translate into infringements of property rights onto others. Okay, guys. Thanks again, and please, if you want to hear more, subscribe to my YouTube channel at youtube.com slash ancapchase, and have a great day.